SRAM Rival Axis versus Force Axis. With SRAM introducing the cheaper rival to force, which should you choose? The wireless world of SRAM just got that little bit more complicated. To simplify things, we've left out the pro level world of RED and thought we'd compare Rival Axis with Force Axis. Before we get on, I want to thank our sponsors Freewheel for decking us out in this riding gear. If you want to know more, check out the links in the video description. I've tested both Force and the new Rival group set, and I'm going to focus on the feel, price, and weight of each part of the drivetrain before finally crowning the victor, so stay tuned for that later. Of course, these are just my opinions and yours may differ, so please let us know what you think in the comments. Firstly, let's look at the shifters and brakes. The brake units between Force and Rival are actually remarkably similar. Both use the updated two-piece caliper construction as their basis. Force, however, uses SRAM's easy-to-use bleeding edge port system to make brake bleeding and maintenance simple. Rival forgoes this to just use a standard threaded bleeded port connection. So, whilst you may not have the simplicity of the bleeding edge system, it does mean you can use a wider variety of bleed kits, i.e. cheaper options. The shifter units on Rival are slimmed down compared to Force at 34.3 millimeters wide by 67.5 millimeters tall. Force is 36.3 by 71.4. The reason for this is the Rival shifters don't have the same feature set as Force. The Force units have brake contact point adjustment, enabling you to choose how your brakes engage in combination with reach adjust for the lever. Rival retains just reach adjustment only. Force also has two additional ports that enable you to add remote shifters, where Rival, you only get the standard triggers behind the brake levers for gear changing. Alongside the slimmer shape, Rival also gets a new grip cover. The linear grip is a little deeper than the diamond grid patterning on Force, and therefore it just feels a little softer and it's a little more comfortable. Rival brake levers are aluminium, whereas Force goes down the lighter composite route. Right, here's my opinion. It may be a case of Force's grey silver composite finish not aging brilliantly, but Rival scores really well here. The sort of mix of gloss and matte black and the rubber hood covers with their linear grip that matches the shift trigger looks somehow keener. It's smarter industrial design, it looks more considered, and it's a really nice clean look. In use too, that linear rubber grip squishes and conforms more easily than the diamond grip patterning of both Force and Red, making the Rival shifter somewhat more comfortable. Force though gets both reach adjust and brake contact point adjustment. Rival just retains the reach adjust. And brake contact tweaking is great to have, but on the two force axis bikes I've got, um, I've adjusted that contact point once on each. Even after replacing brake pads, I've never touched this adjuster again. Rival missing this function doesn't seem to have adversely affected performance. It seems SRAM have set Rival squarely up in the middle of the brake feel range, um, and the feel out that lever is excellent. I do, however, like that I can add additional shift triggers to my force bikes. I'm not interested in sprint shifters as my big shovel-like hands means that I can still reach the triggers from, from down in the drops. What I do, however, like is putting satellite shifters on the tops, having a bit of stealth shifting from, from when I'm just riding up on the tops, like cruising it along up a climb, rolling along with your mates. It never gets old when you can just quickly jump a couple of gears without moving, moving your hands and get the jump on somebody which rarely happens for me, but it's good when it does. So my winner here is the force axis shifters, but then rival brake calipers. In the numbers, rival shifters and brakes, the weight for a pair is 845 grams, and they're priced at 185 pounds each. Force shifters and brakes weight 722 grams, price 205 pounds each. So the winner there is Ram Force. Now I'm going to move on to the chain set and power meter. The rival chain set comes in three versions. The standard 2x with either a 4633 or a 4835. And then there's the wide option with 4330 chain rings. There's also a 1x wide with options of 3840, 42, 44 and 46 for the ring size. The power meter option is available on all chain sets and as an upgrade kit. The rival chain set uses aluminium arms and a new angular forearm direct mount design for the steel chain rings and the spider, whereas Force's crank arms are carbon and its chain rings lighter alloy. Force chain sets also add a further length with a 177.5mm option on the crank arm length and the chain sets available in 2x, 1x and wide options like Rival, although adding a 48 tooth option for the 1x chain set. The rival power meter option is a left-hand crank arm and spindle design that measures single-sided power and calculates for the full power of number. 
Force's power meter option is based around the Quark D0 platform as found on Trown's flagship Red Group set. So here's my opinion on these. Now Force may have the superbly accurate D0 power meter option and carbon crank arms and it's significantly less weight. But I have to admit, I think that the rival chain set looks like the classier option. The integration of the crank arms and the chain rings is better, smoother, and smarter in its design. It's really, really nicely thought out. I'm also going to get a bit controversial now when it comes to power meters. Now, I have a Force D0 here, and I also have the old school 11 speed red D0 meter on one of my own bikes. Um, and I'm impressed just how accurate and consistent they are with each other, despite them being on two very different group sets. But I do like the idea of Rival's cheap and simple solution. That it runs off a AAA battery for a start, and that it's just 322 pounds as a chain set, or the upgrade option is just 230 pounds. If you have one bike and you want to improve by using power, then having a power meter that's consistent with itself and one that gives you regular comparable readings takes precedent over anything else when it comes to out and out accuracy. I can see the argument that should you want to step up to something more pro, then perhaps the numbers will need some readjustments. That might be a bit of a pain, but if it works and stays consistent with itself, then why worry? It's all a bit of a moot point so far anyhow, as I'm still waiting on my sample of meters to arrive in the post. I've been promised that it's on its way over from Chicago, so as soon as I get it, I'll be able to do some comparative tryouts between Red, Force, and the new rival. And my winner here, again, it's SRAM Rival. So when we're looking at the numbers, the rival chain set weighs 844 grams for the two by. The two by wide version weighs less at 822 grams, and then the one by version, 703 grams, and it's priced at just 120 pounds. Now, the force chain set weighs considerably less at 755 grams for the two by or 708 grams for the two by wide. And then if you move down to the, the one by version, that's significantly lighter still at just 625 grams. It does cost more though at 225 pounds. Now, if you're looking at the rival chain set with a power meter, that the weight then creeps up to 893 grams, 872 grams in the wide, 745 grams in the one by and that's priced at £322. Now, the upgrade kit for Rival is just the left hand and the power, power meter spindle. It only adds 40 grams in weight, costs £230. Now, the force power meter, um, you can't actually buy that as a chain set. What you do is you buy the new Quark D0 Spider at the force level. It only adds 100 grams in weight, but it does cost £400. Now let's move on to the front and rear mechs. The rival front mech uses the same design as Force and it has the same internal electronics and motors and it uses the same 50 pound battery, both in the front and the rear. The plates on the rival front mech are pressed steel rather than Force's lighter aluminium plates. The rival front mech weighs 180 grams in two by, 182 grams in two by wide and costs 162 pounds. The force front mech weighs 180 grams in two by, 187 grams in two by wide, and costs 180 pounds. Perhaps the different, biggest difference between the two groups, from a technical point of view, is the rear mech. Yes, Rival and Force, like on the front mech, shares the same motors, electronics, and tenor and brains, but Force uses SRAM's orbit fluid damper to manage the chain. That basically means that it, it smooths things out, it, it manages chain tension when you're riding over rougher surfaces and it does it superbly well. For very little in the way of a weight penalty too. Rival switches out the orbit damper for a more traditional clutch spring like on SRAM's one by mechanical groups like the ever popular Force One. Rival's cage plates on the rear mech are also pressed steel and it runs on steel bearings. Force gains a lighter aluminium plates, but it does run on exactly the same steel bearing. In my opinion, in terms of pure aesthetics, Rival again wins out. The subtle mix of black on black graphics and the polished metal really, really works on the front mech. Even though Force and Rival share the same dimensions and the design, the front mech on the Rival version weirdly looks more streamlined, a little bit slimmer. I guess there must be something in the old adage of black being slimming, as the Axis front mechs are pretty bulky items. As for the rear mech, Rival has proved excellent with its simplest spring-loaded clutch, keeping the chain in check. I would, however, opt for the Force version here, as explaining to people that my gears are controlled by a fluid damper called Orbit sounds suitably NASA just to justify the price. So, my winner here, it's a split decision. I'd go for the rival front mech, but then I'd go for the Force rear. 
So the rival rear mech, that weighs in at 366 grams with a tooth capacity of 36 teeth, and it costs $255 or 236 pounds. Force rear mech, however, there are different options. You get the short cage at 322 grams with a 33 tooth capacity, that one costs £290 or $350. And then there's the forced rear mech in the wide version. That's 327 grams, but that has a huge tooth capacity of 36 teeth. That one, same price, $350, £290. So now, moving on to the rear cassette. The rival XG1250 cassette is available in the 1033 and the 1036, and it's made using SRAM's pin dome construction with all steel sprockets and it's finished in a really nice high polish and hardened nickel chrome plate. Whereas Force's HG1270 uses SRAM's mini cluster construction. That means the four smallest cogs are all CNC machined from a single billet of material. And then the remaining eight cogs, they're put together in the usual kind of pinned construction, but they are made from a lighter aluminium. The Force cassettes were originally, and that's pre-2021, finished in an all black, but the latest version, they've moved over to the same high polish finish as Rival. It just looks much, much nicer. And I think SRAM were so impressed with the way that the budget cassettes came out, they decided just to bring it into Force as well. Force does have more options than Rival when it comes to cassettes. So you can get a 1026, a 1028, a 1033, and a 1036. Now, let's talk the numbers. Rival cassette, it weighs 282 grams in the 1033, 338 grams in the 1036, and retails for $125 or 112 pounds. Force cassette, that weighs in at 266 grams for the 1033, 310 grams for the 1036, and that one retails at $185 or 170 pounds. Here's my opinion. There's absolutely no question here. I'd go with Rival. Its finish looks brilliant. So good, in fact, that SRAM have chosen to roll out that exact same finish on its much more expensive Force cassettes. And secondly, because it's significantly cheaper than Force, and it's not that much heavier. And here's my reasoning. Cassettes and chains wear out, so why not go for something that will save you a few quid? On the wear issue, however, when 12 Speed was launched, the bottom half of the internet was just full of stories and opinions that it was going to wear out so quickly, having a 10 tooth cog at the bottom, etc., etc. Weirdly, not so much when Campag launched their 13 speed group set with a 9 tooth bottom. Anyhow, because of the extra forces on a 10 tooth sprocket, then cassettes should wear out sooner, apparently. Rationally, however, surely that depends on how much time you actually spend in that 10. Um, my own bike, the, this one here, um, I've been running this 12 speed with a 10 tooth bottom gear for a couple of years now, and it's done in excess of 5,000 miles so far, and it's not really showing any great signs of wear. But my winner here is Rival, just for such cost-effective bling. Now moving on to the final piece of the puzzle, and that's the chain. The rival chain uses the exact same flat top design as both Force and Red, and both use the quick joining flat top power link. Force has hardened chrome inner and outer plates and runs on solid pins, whereas rival uses the same solid pins, but with just hardened steel plates. That just adds just a few grams, not so much that you'd really be concerned about. But here's my opinion. Well, the differences are negligible with only seven grams and a couple of quid between them. I think this is one instance where I might spoil myself and go with force. Um, if we're looking at the rival, the chain weighs in at 266 grams, that's for 120 links, um, and it costs $30 or 28 pounds. The force chain, that weighs 259 grams for the same 120 links, costs $35 or 30 pounds. So here's my final opinion. With all things considered, if I was lucky enough to buy this tomorrow, I'd actually buy a mixture of the two. And this is because both Force and Rival are totally compatible with each other. So my cost-effective wireless group set shapes up to look something like this. Shifters, I'd go for the higher spec Force Axis, but with a Rival Axis brake calipers. The chain and rear mech, I'd go with Force Axis, but the chain set, front mech, and cassette would all be from Rival. Now, I am a huge fan of Force Axis, but Rival Axis has certainly shown itself as impressive in both looks and performance. Hopefully this might mean roadies get away from the dogma of pure simple group set series builds on bikes and opt for a more mix and match approach. The mix and match approach just makes it much, much more sense, especially when it comes to SRAM and to Axis, and it's something mountain bikers have been doing for years and years and years. And I think SRAM have actually designed it this way. They are, would actually like you to start you know, mixing in, upgrading, even downgrading. 
What would be your ideal group set? Are you a die-hard mechanical shifting fan? Or maybe you still prefer Shimano's DI2 or even Campagnolo's EPS systems? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon. And then every time we upload a new video, you'll get a notification.